Wrong run. Wrong run. Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> How's it going here? A uh, pre day before the hump day. It is the Sports Drive here on May 24, 2016, brought to you by Walmart, uh, <laughs> Cleaver Supplements, hey, and man. all your fine sponsors of the Arena Sports Network. How's it going, everybody, on a Tuesday? I am Josh Lopez. I'm your director of Chaos on the Sports Talk Show, known as the Sports Drive. Uh, PSA before every show we do, this is a non politically correct uh, sports talk show. There is some vulgar language throughout the show. So I'm sure your kids should be at school finishing the year out. So I don't think that's going to be a problem here. But if you are offended by what's said on today's show, we're not doing it in a negative connotation. We're just here three guys having conversations about sports like if we're sitting right next to each other and shooting the shit. That's basically what this whole show is about. And we're not shoving agendas down your throat period in other words if you have a stick shoved up your ass frankly my dear we don't give a fuck yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it, en- en- enough enough is enough already with these uptight bastards in today's society you need to let loose and have some fun i don't care what time of the day it is and and yes, Josh, I have Vega rolling in the background. I, I think I'm gonna keep this rolling. I think I'm gonna keep this rolling during the introductions too. All right. Speaking of intro- introductions, let's go into the Gene introductions. And I'm gonna lead off first because I want to introduce our fearless leader because he always gets introduced last. No, 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 no. Today he's in the leadoff spot. This is a man that advocates Jay Cutler. That advocates a visit to Wrigley Field just for the bloody hell of it, but he's going to come out throwing up because of the food in that joint. This is also a guy that loves his wrestling. He loves the White Sox. He loves the Bears. He loves the Bulls, and he loves the Blackhawks and supports them all. And he also does a great job controlling somewhat the chaos here on the sports (laughs) side. I'm happy to call him a brother from another mother. The one and only Josh Lopez. Yeri, yeri, (laughs) yeri. How's it going, everybody? Um, at what is it, ten oh five right here in Central, which makes it eleven oh five out in the East mm-hmm. Coast. I'm here in Chirac trying to survive uh, another day in my life. Um, <laughs> besides that, you know, life is good. Sox split a day night doubleheader yesterday. We got Chris Sale on the mound tonight. Oh, I'm looking win. forward to that. That's a win. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the people who checked out my play by play article for Extreme Rules this past Sunday. Over 3,000 comments on the article uh, this past job. Sunday. It's Wonderful crazy. Job, Josh. Uh, life is good to be a wrestling fan. A lot of guys coming back from injury now. So I can't, there's nothing for me to complain about, but I do have an opening rant, but I'm saving that for later on. All right, here we go. <laughs> I want to thank so much for the great introduction. Now let's get back to business here. <laughs> me, 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 me. All right. <laughs> Introducing first from Blue Bumblebee, Kentucky. We got the landlord of the KSCM Center. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll see him this weekend at Belmont Stakes getting the horses ready to go. <laughs> you also see this young man uh, hanging out with the Yuma criminals as well. <laughs> got someone on that one. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> this young man is the Steve Finley of the Sports Drive. For your old school baseball fans, you know who Steve Finley is. <laughs> Stop it. He is the one and only self proclaimed bully master himself, Andrew Browning. What's up, buddy? That's the most cheesiest thing I've ever heard in my life. Say that again because Walmart boy can't see to stop interrupting you every time you talk. Go ahead. (laughs) What's up, Snowman? What's going on, Brownie? I'm going to introduce Sean, and I want to give Josh such a laugh. Okay? (laughs) All right. And I will borrow part of Josh's introduction. 
out of blue bumblebee where the fuck am i idaho because we don't know what a quarter lane is quarter lane <laughs> sounds like a a, a, a chicken sandwich <laughs> look at justin in the chat room <laughs> can i have a can i have can i have a quarter lane please you want cheese on that yes we got a young man who thinks Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback ever, and he sucks ass. We also have a young man who thinks David Ortiz is not juicing because we know that he is. Can't come within a hit shy of a, of the cycle. <laughs> when we all know the greatest Red Sox player of all time is Dustin Pedroia and not Ted Williams. We all know the greatest Celtic <laughs> of all time is Dennis Johnson and not Larry Bird, and I'm shitting around when I say that. Right? Hey, also, also, uh, Bobby Valentine is the greatest manager, not Terry Francona. But let's <laughs> see here. <laughs> and, and we all know, and I'm really going to get him with this, and Sean, realize I'm kidding around when I say this. We all know that the Red Sox comeback against the Yankees in 2004 was absolutely staged. They really didn't make that comeback. Pokey Reese just happened to be there for the final out. I'm kidding as I say all of that. The one and only Sean Mann. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Sports Drive on this Tuesday, May 24th, 2016. We got a guy there that's pretty that's all upset in the morning named Browning Master. <clears throat> Because Cleveland lost last night. Oh, oh, oh. Hello there, Josh. And hello there, Snowman. On a very cloudy, wet day out here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. On this Tuesday, the 24th of May, 2016. I hope everybody is happy and grand. I am with the way the Red Sox are playing right now. And when Brady wins his appeal and comes back, the Pats will be rocking and rolling and off right from the get-go when he wins his appeal and he doesn't have to serve a four-game hey, I, I never <laughs> I, I never told you this, Sean, but when you come when you come close to the camera, you look like ET. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Anyways, let's introduce our final victims of the day. <laughs> look at Before Justin. Look, 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 look at look at Justin. I think I just threw up from Sean's intro. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I'm going to make an executive decision. As the CEO of Arena Sportsnet, you are no longer allowed the rest of this week to say, hear ye, hear ye, during the sports drive, period. <laughs> what? We abolished that? We prohibited that? What the heck is up with this? Come on. I agree. you damn right I, prohibiting it. I man. agree. I'll, I'll do it for Sean this week. <laughs> well, you bet, All right. you, you bet I'll, your sweet I'll, bippy on that one. I can come up with something new right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's right there. I don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. All right. I got him. <laughs> All right. Introducing next from Blue Bumblebee, Indiana. We got the junkyard dog of the sports drive. Woo -woo, uh, we... <laughs> this young man is a college, college crapper Nick advocate. He is a big San Francisco 69ers fan. Uh, he is a big White Sox fan as yeah, well. I am. He, 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 with the exception of Jonathan Hood, he is better than every single analyst or radio host on ESPN 1000 and the score. He is also the the driving force of the Rita Sports Network. He is the one and only snowman, Brian no. I also have something to add to that. We also got a man that's hoping and praying that the Warriors actually win tonight's game against the Thunder because uh, things aren't looking very good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Josh. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Um, and thank you for the wonderful compliment. I mean, not often I get mentioned with Hoodie in the same sentence, but around you, that seems to happen a lot. I, I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, truth is morning. truth, brother. Yes, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this controlled, fucked up chaos we like to call the sports drive. <laughs> and it's fucked up chaos because unlike the other sports shows, including the ones you hear on WEI, WSCR, and WLUPAM 1000, I don't know what station's call letters in Kentucky as of yet, but I will before this week is out. We bring <laughs> the truth. We bring the facts. We bring Period. This, we bring the opinions that people are too damn afraid to say. Period. Just like, just like in our opening rants, that's about to start right now. Go ahead, Josh. May I go first? All right, go ahead, Josh. Fire away. I got even a bigger one, though. You know what? I need to cue up Zangi for Josh's opening rant because I know he's going to throw some verbal punches. There we go. I can't hear it. 
I can't oh, hear the can? song. How about this? Nah. Can you hear it now? Nah, I don't hear it. Here, let me. I just hear <laughs> static in background noise. <laughs> <laughs> After Browning and Justin is great. <laughs> All right, uh, Josh, right. We're with the opening rant, I'm gonna clean up. Right. Can somebody tell me what in the blue hell is the Royal Farms Arena? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> you you messaged me last night, Josh, and I saw that. I was laughing. <laughs> like, like seriously, <laughs> what 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 farm is so royal? <laughs> So cool, Steve Austin's farm. <laughs> what? <laughs> that may be the worst arena name I've heard in my entire life. I know the arena in Baltimore is a dump, but that's the best you can come up with? The Royal Farms Arena? <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Royal Farms Arena. <laughs> Oh my! I, I'm trying. I tried to see if you try to enjoy a wrestling show last night for Raw uh, last night, and it was. And I see the sign, Michael Cole. Oh, hey, we're live for the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have a segment on the Today Show called "Ripping Arena Names." That's going to be gold after Skippy oh, Bale and Smash Shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be in tears after with laughing hard. With I have another rant uh, after this are. one. Um, I think we all are. My second rant goes like this. Once again, like for those that missed yesterday's show, um, for those that keep saying that Roman Reigns can't wrestle, uh, you guys are morons. And because he's a shade, shades of gray character, that means they're doing something wrong with him. You are out of touch, and you need to evolve. Everything in TV and movies have shades of great of it. So, Taz, yeah, I'm talking to you, Taz. You need to evolve, buddy. Period. <laughs> All right, that's uh, it for me. Who wants to go next? All right, my opening rant goes like this. I'm getting really, really tired again. Like, for all you people... Yeah, I just read something that really, really has irked me so much and stuff. Oh, no. And then... <laughs> Well, actually, it's it's not sports related. School threats could be the latest in school swatting. Threats made against schools across the United States led to the evacuation of students Monday in what could be the latest example of so-called swatting against schools. In recent months, hoaxers playing online games have a what? Stop playing online games and stop making this this stop doing this, people. I mean, good grief! We've had enough school shootings over the last what twenty years or something. I mean, it's really sad. Now with our technology, now we got people that are doing this. Like Josh had a point to rip the shootings that are going on in Chicago. Now I'm really, really irked about why people are playing these games and saying, oh, let's play these games, and then we'll start making a we'll, – we'll be a mastermind, start opening fire on innocent children in school. It makes me sick, okay? I mean, our country really is screwed up. We've got to do something to handle all this gun violence, and I don't know what enough we're going to do with enough. this. Yeah, exactly. I'm fed up with this. Can we just bring back the arcades, please? Yes. Yeah. Can we just bring back the arcades where you have to oh. roll, roll – you have to walk in with a rule of quarters. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, Sean, I, I heard I heard this story over the weekend that, that really pissed me off. Like, there, there was a report on ABC7 saying that an 81-year-old grandmother got shot at her own daughter's funeral and died the same day as her daughter's funeral. Oh, that's bullshit, man. Yeah. It, it is, and it's a sad world we live in, and it's a sad country. I love the fact that I was born and raised in Chicago, but I'm glad I got the hell out when I did. Because right around, and Josh, you know this, right around 2005 is when everything really began to escalate violence-wise. Yes. It just got worse. It has gotten worse. Like, I remember Jonesboro, Arkansas. I always remember Columbine. I remember Virginia Tech. I remember what happened. And the worst one for me that really broke me into tears, and I'm sorry to say it, was Newtown, Connecticut. And now you've yeah. already, all of a sudden, now you've got elementary children that had to be evacuated on Monday. Some officials describe Monday's threats as automotive or robotic and at least two at Lakewood High School outside Denver and at Ben Franklin Elementary School in Rochester, Minnesota. And you know what? It always seems to me that Colorado has always been the place, the state that has had most of the threats that have happened, like Columbine 
Don't forget what happened in Aurora, Colorado uh, back in 2012 and July of 2012. It's just so sad. I'm fed up with it. People who are really thinking about doing this, enough already. Stop acting like jerks and get yourself some help. Don't go after innocent people and open fire. Good grief. I'm sick and tired of seeing innocent kids and even elementary children getting threatened by idiots out there. Good grief. I haven't flipped out in a long time, but today I really had to flip out for an opening rant. Holy crap. <laughs> Brian, you it's sad. Go. It really is. I don't know what's. I mean, our country's screwed up. Brownie, you better go next, man. No, I don't know what I mean. It's all good. Oh come on! You're probably that's upset. Cop out. That's because okay. he's. That's because he's I'm upset that morning because Cleveland lost. <laughs> all right. I know Justin's going to appreciate my opening rant. I know Sean and uh, Josh are going to appreciate it. And Brandon, I think you'll appreciate it too. My opening rant begins with this statement. And this is, and don't, and for anybody that thinks, oh, you're saying this because the Warriors lost, suck one, all right? This has been my feeling for the past five years. NBA is softer than my daughter's pillow. Correct. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> The exactly. NBA and the year the NBA changed was 1995, okay, because they're coming off uh, even four years before the um, silly 50 game season in 1999. Mm -hmm. The NBA has developed into a bunch of millionaire pussies <laughs> that don't play hard, that don't <laughs> practice hard. And Alan Iverson, thank you for that practice rant because I fully understand it now. And they, all they want to see is themselves on television making some stupid highlights when they don't have the fundamentals to play. Okay? Excuse me. I will, I will say this every time. As much as I love what teams like the Warriors and I'll include the Thunder and the Spurs are doing. It is not the same NBA from when I grew up watching. It's the circus the lay on the hardwood. That's all it is. The first year I watched the NBA was 1980, and there was a fellow by the name of Irvin Magic Johnson who became the only rookie to win finals MVP. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then Larry, <clears throat> uh, Larry Bird, Julia Serving, everybody in that era – and I, I know I always talk about the golden era, and Josh, this one's for you. I had someone come up to me. Justin, this one's for you also. I had someone come up to me and tell me, you need to get with the current times of the NBA. The game's changed. Yeah, it's changed for the worse because there are no fundamentals shown anymore. None. No one knows how to take two fucking steps and get to the hole. Not three, not four, <laughs> and uh, that's the exact that's the exact date, Sean, May 16th, 1980. Yep. Magic that got two points. You, you know what? Two points, fifteen rebounds, oh. and seven assists. Okay? That was two at days before Mount. That was two days before Mount St. Helens erupted. At the, at yeah. the, at the, that occurred at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Now shut up and let me finish, Walmart boy. Sorry, sorry, but, buddy. It's all right, all right. <laughs> but think, but think about how the NBA has changed ever since. And I don't even throw his wizard years in this. When Michael Jordan left in 1998, the NBA went to shit, period. Correct. I'm sorry, because the Michael Jordan was the last great star from the golden era that showed fundamentals, that knew the game of basketball, that played the game of basketball with a passion. You know what? During the golden era, nobody gave a fuck about the money. The money yeah. came in. The money hey, let me, add, in. let me add this okay. in. And let me add this in some. And, um, I noticed that the NBA started becoming predetermined once the big three in Boston got together <laughs> in 2008. And, and you know 2008. And you know what? You're right. I mean, uh, kudos for what they did in winning their 17 title. But it was, predeter it was predetermined f before that. And I will give you uh, – yeah, thank you, Justin. I, I Look, in, in many ways I agree with what Justin just put in the chat room. But let me get back to the NBA for a second. This is the the year and the series that gave me the clue that the NBA was predetermined was 2002. The series, the Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the Kings. And I'll go back to what David Stern himself said. That, 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 uh, I know I 
joke about Tom Brady cheating, but David Stern cheated more than anybody. Period. Okay? Does 1985 come to mind with the draft lottery? And you know what? Lawrence O'Brien passed away in 1984, and David Stern somehow worked himself up from being a legal counsel to being the commissioner of the NBA. Now, David Stern, I understand you wanted to make the NBA a global game, and the Dream Team had a lot to do with that, but the Dream Team did that with their popularity, with the way they played the game, with the integrity they showed they showed for the game when they went to Barcelona and whipped everybody's ass playing basketball. You didn't have to make it a money-making machine. Hell, there were so many players that wanted a chance in the NBA, but you had a foreign influx come in to ruin their chances. The series in 2 pulled me away from the NBA for good. And I mean not and I mean in terms of following everything. Okay? In terms of following who does what. Okay? When you have a team in the Sacramento in the Sacramento Kings who were the best team in the NBA with a 61 and 21 record. Yep, playing that's right. Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Okay? Yes, the Lakers stole game 1. Give them that. But then the Kings won the next two and it should have been 3-1, but the officials cheated in game four, and here is where everything changed in that series. At the end of the first half of game four, if you go back and look, they allowed a basket by Samaki Walker that should not have counted. That was the difference when Robert Ory hit the three at the end of the game, and that's when I, that's when I walked away. You know, after the Lakers won game seven in Sacramento, I pulled away for good. The players, I, you know, all, their attitude is soft. Yep. They're all about branding. They're all about scoring. They're not about playing together. They're not about playing with a purpose. They're not about playing with fundamentals. They're not about playing except for two or three, uh, two or three teams. They're not interested in playing as a team. Mm-hmm. Period. You, you know what? And ever since we've done the show, Snowman, we've talked about a lot of the history of the NBA. Like, everybody's amazed with my facts. You know, I wasn't even alive back when I mentioned these titles. Like, you know, May 16th, 1980, the Lakers won 123 yeah. to uh, 107. You know, and, and there's a lot of history with that, too, because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was out injured in that NBA. Yeah, and Magic Johnson took over. And uh, and I Brent Musburger goes, and the most valuable player is Magic Johnson. He starts at center, he plays forward and guard, and then the very next year, Larry Bird was able to win his first title. And you know what? That's what made the NBA so much better. I was like, well, we need the days of the 80s and 90s, but we'll never get those days back because this is the softest era in the NBA. And I can agree with you, Snowman. I will never forget – Going for Sacramento because of how much as a Celtic fan, I hate the God dang Lakers. Yes. I was watching everything happen where all the calls were going the Lakers way. And I was at some friends' house who were diehard Sacramento Kings fans. I had some very good friends I grew up with. They were they were they lived in California. Their roots were Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Pissed as hell when calls were going against them in game four and also in game six was another thing. And that's where stupid effing lousy Tim Donahue, that dumb shit, and the NBA officials really started screwing the LA the, the Kings. And you know what? LA did not deserve to even win two of those finals. They should have lost to Portland in game seven. And they should have lost to Sacramento. They were lucky they won two NBA. Ch- they were lucky they won three championships. Like 0-1 was expected because they just blew every opponent out. I mean, I thought after Philly won Game One, being yeah, fans, you know, they tore everybody apart in 2001. But in 2000, they should have lost to Portland in Game Seven, and the referee started cheating that. And Justin just put up a great, great comment. And this is another point I want to expand on as we go along. The players coming in the league are very young, ages 18 to 21, and it has a big effect on the league. Justin, let me piggyback on that on that fact. David Stern set this up and then fucked it up by allowing players that only played one year of college to enter the NBA. Worried me, and you have your exceptions to the rule from back in the day, Daryl Dawkins, Moses Malone, Kevin Garnett. You have your exceptions, okay? Uh... How, is this is this all right now? A little bit more. How about that? That all right? Yeah. Okay. Sound like you're in a library. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm making adjustments as I go here. But thinking about this, thinking about this point, 
if I were commissioner of the NBA, no one comes in until one of two factors, one or two factors remain. Number one, you played four years of college and you graduated, or two, you play at least three and you graduated because there are players that graduate in three years in college. Okay. Why don't they, why don't these kids allow themselves to grow into their bodies? Why don't they allow themselves to grow into their minds of where they can be physically and mentally prepared? And I go back to Michael Jordan doing something at North Carolina that a lot of these kids will never do. He took a journalism class before he came out. And that journalism class allowed him to be the media mogul that he is, period. And you're right, Justin. I know, I, I know it's money. But at the same time, we see the reason that it's the softest era in the NBA is because everybody's driven by money and not driven by getting better, period. Hey, when you can control what your product is from a on-screen standpoint – and you're still mm-hmm. making money out of your ass at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to these people. And it's a cruel reality because that takes away from the enjoyment of the product that the fans love. And that's what's come with this oversensitive, corporated cesspool oh, yeah. that's become the society since 9-11. It's happened in every single yeah. business around the world. It's happened in the music business. It has happened mm-hmm. in movies especially it's happened in sports. It's overdone, and honestly, it's, it's getting old. Morning. And I have to say, uh, welcome. We got a new member uh, coming into the chat room. Thanks for coming in. I have to say, though, too, that it's amazing to find out exactly since J- Michael Jordan retired. Like, we all know he retired from the Bulls, but after he retired from the Washington Wizards, you know, I will never forget. Hold on. Let's back this up a little bit. September 10th, 2001, I will never forget the day before we were attacked. The biggest story that was hitting the whole world was when Michael Jordan was announcing he was going to come back to the NBA. And that was a huge, huge story because they were mentioning how NBA ratings were really going down Mm -hmm. since, since, since he left. And then when he came back, it was huge. And then when 9-11 came, that whole story was gone. Because, But Jordan said he was doing it for the love of the game when he made that yeah. decision in September of 2001. That was the big thing because everybody was like, oh, great, he's coming back to the NBA. Everybody's looking forward to it. And, and, they thought, and the Wizard fans were all happy because they thought that with Michael Jordan coming back that maybe the Wizards would be good. But I, I don't know. I just didn't – you know, he did a pretty good job with the Wizards, but the Wizards just didn't kind of seem like situation, it. Sean, yeah. he played for the love of the game, period. Yeah, he played for the love of the game, and if he maybe if he would have won titles in the nation's capital, it would have been great and stuff too. But then when Michael Jordan retired from the Wizards in 2003, there was a definite, definite feeling that the wow. NBA ratings just went downhill from then. And I kind mm-hmm. of have been wondering, you know, what have the ratings really been like? in the last 13 years since MJ retired. That's the big uh, situation. And let me get this in. Um, So we have all talked about how, like, society is uh, always taking themselves too seriously these days, Sean, Mm -hmm. and how everybody doesn't have the ability to have fun. Here's something I think is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this or not, but there's a mom who purchased a – a Chewbacca mask that talks. And she made a, a funny video about it and put it on social media. And the, the video's gone viral. Now, here's the thing. You can look at this girl and you can think, oh, she's crazy. Why is she wasting her time doing something like that? Why is she so obsessed with Star Wars? Should she be focusing on doing that? That, that? That's the mentality of people these days. But yeah. no, they're like, she's having the time of her life. She's like, this ain't for my kid. This is for me. I'm going to have fun with it. There you <laughs> and, go. And she's having a good time being herself. And you know what? Coles, the company Coles just came out and gave Chewbacca matches for free to her kids. She's been on Good Morning America. And now I just saw a thing on Twitter where they did a thing for uh, one of the late night shows. Um, and she was in the same car as J.J. Abrams, the director for the last Star Wars movie. How freaking cool is that? Somebody being their own self being awarded for that. And, and that's how it should be. That's absolutely. Uh, let, let's see, Josh. Um, I just want to read real quickly. I know I'm not the host of the Sports Drive, and uh, it's you and the Snowman, but I wanted to say this too. 
Intro opening round. We got that out of the way. What's wrong, LaQueen? This ought to be great, Browning. Address toward you. The NHL playoff update on this day in sports history. Famous birthday shout out. Skip Bayless, Bash Hour, ripping the arena names. I cannot wait till we get to that one. And lastly, the spoken word. That is our show for today. Back to you, Josh. All right. Can we get to the LaQueen rant now? Yes, let's do it. Yes, LaQueen segment. Oh, Browning, this ought to be good. Um, I will toss it. I know it's coming. Hey, let, me, let me let me say this to Justin. The only way I'm watching the NBA Finals this year is if it's the Raptors versus the Thunder. Period. And you know what? That's it. And, and you know what? I'll pay attention to that. And I'm I, I look. I, like I said, I may be a fan of the Warriors, but at the same time, I know what good basketball is. I'll let's, need to see the Warriors and Cavaliers for the second straight year. Give me let's, a break. Uh, let's get to uh, Snowman. I messaged you last night, Snowman, yes. about the Raptors beating the uh, Cavaliers last night, 105-99. to 99. I kept Josh updated because you had that event with Rock. Let's get to you, Snowman, your thoughts. Can the Raptors win this series? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, Stephen A. Smith said last night, he said, quote, well, quite frankly, <laughs> Quite frankly, I am surprised and shocked that the uh, Toronto Raptors have won back to back games and they should be up three games to one. And I thought Cleveland would end the series in five. All right, I'll start there. Stephen A. Smith, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, doggone well, Toronto is busy putting a foot in your Cavaliers' ass. I mean, how much? How much- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You have to kiss Bayless's ass because he's loving Cleveland, and you want to see LeBron dominate Toronto, and it ain't happening because a fellow named Bismarck Biombo is busy blocking shots all over the place. I think he had six blocks last night. Yep, he had 20 yep, he did. In game three, and he had 15 rebounds in game four. I said at the top of this series, and you guys remember, the Cavaliers would not have an answer for Bismarck Biombo. They haven't had an answer yet in this in this series. Oh, that would be a hell of a pickup, Josh. But (laughs) Cleveland does not and will not have an answer for Bismarck Biombo. I'm sorry to say Cleveland will not win again. They will not win again. The, The series I'm comparing this to is 2010. When the Cavaliers played the Boston Celtics. I'll never forget that. Yep. Cleveland won the first two. And then... The Celtics tied the series in Boston, winning games three and four. The most important game of that series is game, was game five. And you expected LeBron or LeShit or LeBum or LeQueen or whatever the hell he is, depending Le, on when Le, he Le Deflated? Up. Deflated LeQueen? Deflated. There we go. Le- <laughs> <laughs> and what happened in game five? The Celtics destroyed. Oh yeah, hey, hey, I'm yeah trying, I loved it. I was trying to watch. I was I trying to watch. Too. I'm trying to find that full broadcast, Sean. I was trying to watch Raw last night, and Justice sent me to you like, "Oh come on, LeBron needs to bring a title back to the land." I told him that the the. the <laughs> I, I, hold up, Sean! What I'm not done. Doing? Hold up, Sean! I'm not done. I said that the appeal to Shitland is that they're the home of misery. That's the appeal to it. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, though, Snowman. I do remember though, Game One. The Celtics almost beat them. So this was six years ago. Mm-hmm. We're talking about. They almost won that game, but they ended up losing by eight. And I'll remember thinking, oh, awesome. Lord, I said, it looks like this is going to be a long series for the Celtics. They yeah. came back. They got a split in game two, the Celtics did. Cleveland made it a mission to go into Boston. They won game three. They blew them out like 120 to 95. It's like, oh, yes. man, that just gave them life. Game four, the Celtics came back and won game four. They won by like nine points and stuff. My game night. five, the Celtics won 120 to 88. I will never forget, gentlemen, seeing the Cavalier fans' faces sitting there like just all sad and all mad because they're wondering, oh, no, this is going to be LeBron's probably last game at the Quick and Dump Loans Arena. And apparently then the Celtics win game six at the Garden, and I loved it. And then all of a sudden. Thing. Yeah. It's the thing about game six of that series. The Cavaliers, just like these current Cavaliers, I hate to say it, Justin, just like these current Cavaliers are missing two things. They have no heart. Correct. No hustle. Correct. Because there's no way a strong, a supposed strong team like Cleveland 
gets their ass kicked on the boards by plus 15 in back-to-back games. And I have to... I have to disagree with Stephen A. Smith, Josh, uh, because the reason why, okay, he said last night that he was surprised that the Raptors won game four. I was not surprised when I saw. That's a great uh, homogenized Holstein bullshit. When I saw that the Raptors, when I saw the Raptors blow out Cleveland in game three, I said, there's no way Cleveland's going to win game four because I thought, you know, Toronto has been very, very tough to play at home, and the Raptors can beat this team. Their three-point shooting was big, and you know what? Despite the fact that Cleveland made a big run, I still said, you know what? You may be nine out of nine, or you made your first ten shots and you haven't missed, but you know what, Cleveland? You're going to start missing eventually, and Toronto's going to take this game over. If I'm a Cleveland fan, yeah, you're doggone right you're, you're god dang scared because right now you realize the series is tied to two. Toronto goes in there and wins game five, Kiss it goodbye, oh. and it would be so much relief because you know what? Every goddamn year since 2011, everybody wants to see fucking LeBron James in the goddamn NBA Finals. I'm I sick know. of this prick. Let's, I'm let's tired of the violin. Let's get the violins out for the LeBron excuse. Yeah, exactly. I'm so sick of this piece of shit every year. I'm sorry, Browning. The guy is overrated. He's two and four in the NBA Finals, and they make such a big freaking deal that he loses. I'm so sick of it. They didn't give it's the, like Dal- the world crashing. <laughs> you know what? They didn't give the Dallas Mavericks any respect when Dallas beat them no. five years ago in six games in Miami. No. 2014, they didn't give the Spurs very much respect because everybody was wondering, oh, what is LeBron James going to do? Then he makes a stupid, idiotic decision to go back to Cleveland. Last year, they didn't even give the Golden State Warriors any respect last year and because they, they were all focused out. on Cleveland. Be- yeah, Because they were all focused on Cleveland. They were all they- focused on <laughs> why LeBron James played the way he played. And to borrow from Stephen A. Smith, LeBron came up small <laughs> in the 2015 finals, period. Exactly. And you know what? You know what? He came out last year on the air, LeBron James did, and he told the whole world, he says, I'm going to prove to you all that I'm the best player on the planet. Uh, what happened? Uh, the Warriors beat him. And Andre Iguodala locked his ass up. And what happened? The Warriors kicked the shit out of stupid Cleveland, and then all the Cleveland fans it. are crying after the game. <laughs> and that's why Josh calls it shitlin. Quite frankly, I disagree with your assessment there, right there. And you know, shitlin. you know damn well the Cavs better be in the NBA Finals. It oh, sucks. You know what? It look, I'm looking in this camera right now. Okay, <laughs> I have a rant on Stephen A. Smith that I'm going to do Thursday morning on my morning on on my morning show. You know what, Stephen A. and Skip Bayless, fuck you both. Period. <laughs> Yeah, and we I go to Browning. Yeah, Browning, said, what's your? Yeah, I said it. I said it, and I meant it. Cause I'm sick and tired of people covering for Stephen A. Smith. Just like I'm sick and tired of people covering for fucking Skip Bayless. Period. Fuck you both. Period. <laughs> we go to Browning. What's your thoughts? You got to be a bit concerned. You're the LeBron fan. What do you say about hey, that? Hey, Justin. I told you I was honorary this morning. Hey, Justin, you can keep up bringing Brady all you want. Both of them are cheaters, period. Where are you on? Whoa, leave one out and keep Brady the other Brady is a one cheater. Up. Oh, he is it. Okay, you know what? All right, Brady, go ahead. Two athletes in, I hate to put these two athletes in the same sentence, and I know this is a horrible joke, but I'm going to go ahead and make this joke anyway. Oh, jeez. Forgive me. Brady cheats more than Tiger Woods did. Correct. <laughs> LeBron Browning, I want to hear your thing. thoughts, Browning, about Cleveland. What's the matter there, Browning? I would, I would say, that, <laughs> no, I would say the Cleveland, they're a little bit worried right now and that they're going to win the next two games. I, I, I'm saying this right now on here, on camera. I would say they were going to win the next two games because the next two games are at home. I would give Toronto credit that the two games were at Toronto. They won the two games at Toronto. I tell you though, Toronto does win Game Five. It's gonna get. It's okay, over. You know what? Oh, it's, it's over. over. You, know what, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
<laughs> Look, I, 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 can, I say it all the time. I can give a rat's ass about the NBA during playoff times. And same thing with the NFL. Because it's written right in front of your face. No matter how many things you say or how many soliloquies you come up with, one way or another, the cheating-ass Tom Brady or LeBron James oh. will find themselves at either the conference finals or the, the final series for the championship. Period. Oh, wow. like an end of story. And he can't tell me that LeBron. Oh, oh, but come on, other players talk to the referees. Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, on. you saw Tom Brady give a signal to reset the play clock for God's sake. Yeah. that's not a form of cheating. Do, I don't we, know. do we need to bring up what LeBron did to the Bulls last year with David Blatt? That bullshit bring, for five minutes for a uh, timeout they shouldn't even had. I will never forget oh, yeah. you never Josh, your face. No. You were and so and angry. Not Josh, not only that, that was a culmination of the bull. That was a culmination of the Bulls getting cheated every single year in the fucking playoffs. Do we need to bring up what happened to them in 2011 in the East mm-hmm. Finals? They blow out Miami in Game One, seven point lead after the first period in Game Two, and all of a sudden the referees decide to come out. Bullshit. It's fucking yeah, bullshit. I, yeah, they're bringing up the Corey Grass sequence. I sat I sat on the couch last night watching the game. So here I am watching it, and the Cavaliers are getting all the calls to go their way. And Toronto did not get one foul called until, like, the second quarter. And I re- was saying, gosh, this game is so freaking fixed. And then finally, the Raptor fans give the officials a loud clap, saying it's about time you called a foul on Cleveland. Good grief. Yeah, I, I, I want to play one video before we go to our next topic. This yeah. is from Raw. What's our next topic? What's our next topic, anyway? Our, our next topic is talking about the uh, NHL playoffs. Uh, just a little quick standing. We We're change, not going to break it down. That, can we change that and have some fun? Because it's a short conversation with the NHL playoffs. Yes, I know. I, uh, just give me a second. I need okay. to bring up a okay. video from Raw last night. Sure. All right. And while he does that, let me get this out of the way. Uh, Arena Sportsnet's content and programming brought to you by Cleaver Supplements. Pure supplements from when genetics are not enough. Today's show is brought to you in part by Crass Construction. Your home improvement specialist since, 19, since 1927 by Wilt Fang Builders of Hebron by Susie's Diner, also for Hebron. And we also welcome Dairy, we also welcome Dairy Queen of, of Hebron. The featured uh, blizzard of the month is the Royal Blizzard, chocolate uh, with Oreos stuffed with chocolate fudge. And I know some, that's something Sean wants right now. That's the Royal <laughs> Blizzard, the blizzard, of, the blizzard of the month uh, presented by Dairy Queen, a proud sponsor of Arena Sportsnet programming. So just so you all know, and for the fools that think I don't do anything, when I'm away from the sports drive or away from Snowman in the morning, I'm out working. All right, I'm out doing what I I'm out doing what I need to do to make this company even more successful than it than it is right now. It is 80 degrees today. I'm that going for it. Sounds so good right now. I gotta go. For it. I gotta go for a run. Same and the weather here. It's English like really cold said, and wet. And, 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 like and, and wait. Sean, check this out. And yes, Dale Yates, I said run. I've been running the past couple of weeks now. You know, you know, when the some bitch text some bitch texted me, um, he loves call he loves calling me tubby, even given the fact that I've lost two hundred pounds in the past three and a half years. Okay. He's so fucking jealous right now that he cannot do what I do, which is step out on faith and get things done. Ha! Screw you, Dale Yates. Yeah. If I, anyway, if I may, if I may borrow from the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> and that blizzard sounds good right now. <laughs> and on the Western <laughs> Conference Finals, <laughs> and for the Western Conference Finals, the Warriors trail their series two games to one. Do they tie the series up when they go back to well, Oakland? Or just two games to one. They trail Cleveland two games to one. Yeah, this was the worst loss the Warriors have ever suffered, but they are the Warriors. They'll bounce back. I say they'll win Game Four tonight. There, you know, no question about it. It'll be a. They need to wake up. It's a wake up call. Tonight's yeah. game is at six p.m. Pacific, which is nine Eastern time on TNT. I saw a interesting matchup that I think I like.
thousand. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Wow. Damn. Well, Martin. I pretty I you know what? I pretty much said this too I, in the chat I, room. You know I gotta play I gotta play it. I pretty much I pretty much say this that you know make this quick though I say tonight the Warriors do tie the series up at two yep. they need to wake up like Josh says the Warriors yep. have to wake up they need to take the ball to the basket and shoot the three ball better and for the Thunder very very simple for tonight you've got to keep putting the pressure on the Warriors tonight if you want to put mm -hmm. them on the brink of elimination and go up three games to one before this series goes back to Oakland for Game Five. Oh, that's so funny. Do you understand what I'm saying to you right yeah. now, you mm -hmm. stupid mm -hmm. idiot? <laughs> oh, I, got better, I got a better one. I got a better. I got a better one. Um, shoot, I forgot the name of the movie. Go on, John. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. It's all it's right. All it good. happens. Let's it go happens. to on this day in sports history. From the 24th of May, 2016. And then I got some trivia before the top of the hour. Yes. Oh, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. What happened on this day, bud? This one second, Walmart boy. We'll be there no this a second. No worries. Uh, this is a great segment. I always like to know what's going on every uh, during these days. On this thing in sports history, the Red Sox will begin their epic collapse. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing Colorado. I know I, mean, I know. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We got, we got a big one here today. Here we go. On this day, 1878, the first American bicycle race was held in Boston. There you go. Not oh, Coeur d'Alene, yeah. Idaho. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to repeat the joke I said this morning during the introductions, how can you walk into a burger place? Can I have a quarter lane, please? What the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> what? Well, come on out to quarter lane. They got good burgers and good stuff to eat out how here. Come on. Actually, how come many on. people actually live in quarter lane? Zero. A lot. A <laughs> lot of people do. We have a Texas Roadhouse out here with a lot right. of steak. Ain't nobody got the best steak. All right, we gotta move on. We got a lot of posts. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> on this day, 1902, Bill Bradley of the Cleveland uh, Indians became the first American League player to hit home runs in four consecutive games. On this day, 1929, the Tigers beat the White Sox six to four in 21 innings. Who's making all that ruckus? Hey, it's Brody. Brownings. Hey, Browning, if yes, you're going to go somewhere, mute your stuff. Mute your stuff. Sit down. All right, here we go. On this day in 1930, Babe Ruth hit home runs in both games of a doubleheader. Not surprised by that. On this day in 1935, um, <laughs> uh, Cincinnati Reds played the Philadelphia Phillies in the first Major League Baseball game at night. The switch for the floodlights was turned on by President F.D. Roosevelt. On this day in 1935, Forty, the first night game at St. Louis Sportsman Park. How about that? Sports. This is for Bush Field, right? Boy. <laughs> um, on this day, 1951, Willie Mays began playing for the New York Giants. Um, on this day, 1962, the officials of the NFL ruled that half time of the regular season games would be cut to 15 minutes. About time. Um, on this day, 1967, the AFL granted a franchise to the Cincinnati Bengals. Pretty cool right there. On this day, 1986, the Montreal Canadiens won their 23rd Stanley League Cup championship. That one's for Sean right there. <laughs> oh, screw you, Canadians. <laughs> on this day, 1989, um, the Rangers. Are you a little jealous that Montreal has 23 Stanley Cups and Boston only has one? They're our arch rivals. We won six cups. They won 23. They're still our arch rivals. Anybody got time for that? 
Yeah. And they're um, still kicking. Yes. <laughs> on this day, 1989, the Rangers fired the general manager and coach Phil Esposito. On this day, 1990, Emson Oilers won their fifth NHL Stanley Cup. And then yep. finally, maybe uh, Boston to do it. If I, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, on this day, 1990, Andre Dawson was intentionally walked five times during the game. That's on this day in sports history. That's a lot of walks. Uh, okay, now for a little trivia. <laughs> and I start with someone. You all shut up about LeBron out there in the chat room. All right, more trivia. Who could agree. Who was ass in 1990 to win the Stanley Cup? Damn, Justin, are you the Queen's attorney today? Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead, you, Stone Stone. What? Don, did you hear the question? Yeah, repeat it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm being playful. Who kicked the Bruins' ass in 1990 to win the Stanley Cup? <laughs> It was the Edmonton Oilers in five games, and I was three years old at that time, but I learned about it years later, and I was pissed off. Damn Oilers. Why are you pissed off at the Edmonton Oilers? They were the, the best Bruins should have won the cup that year in 1990 in the 90s. Stanley Cup. I got it. Okay. Um, Sean, this next one's for you. Oh, no. There are two names in Boston Bruin history that can never be mentioned in the city of Boston. And the year I'm going to give you is 2013. Who are these two individuals? Oh, no, no, no. It's not. You're going to mention that thing about the Blackhawks. Oh, gosh. So who are, so who are they? Was Patrick <laughs> Was Patrick Kane one of them? No. Nope. Nope. Next. I know uh, what it is. No, no. I can't hit the next button yet. I can hit this. <laughs> <laughs> Epideco or whatever the hell his name is. He got the – I forget who it was. All right, then I'm out. I don't know who it was. Brian Bickle and oh, Dave Bowen. That was going to All right. Shit. This one is for Mr. Browning. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> name the ABA franchise that was based out of the state of Kentucky. <laughs> Repeat that again. <laughs> okay. Name the ABA franchise in the 70s that was based out of the state of Kentucky. I wasn't even born in the 70s, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the Kentucky Colonels. I'm sorry. I dug, <laughs> oh, I dug God. Oh, wow. You had oh, I, dug, I dug deep in the – I dug deep in the – <laughs> I dug deep Kentucky in the Colonels. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Uh, Browning, this one's for you, and it's a little more up to date. Who was the last Philadelphia Eagle quarterback to toss a 300 yard game? Donovan McNabb. Uh, You'd be surprised at the answer. Nick Foles. Uh, uh, Nick Foles. Yeah, Nick Foles. And this comes Nick from Foles. Hey, Eagles talk fan. about talk about one hit wonders. Next. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, will be, that will be Tom Brady. But anyway. Well, hey, no. wait. Uh, this one's for Josh. 2005's the year. Game two of the World Series. Name the pitcher that surrendered Pauly Slam. Chad Qualls. That would be him. Ding, ding. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's yes. close to a bell, all right? So I'll, I'll use it. Uh, let, me, let me go back to Sean. We got uh, about four minutes here. Let me go back to Sean. Name the pitcher that surrendered Big Poppy's ALCS tying slam in 2013. Oh, I remember it like yesterday. Game and two it- with two out in the bottom of the eighth. I still remember Joe you. Buck's call. That was Joaquin uh, hey, Benoit. Hey, All right. I was, waiting for you to, I was waiting for you to get to the answer. You take too fucking long. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Browning, this one's for you. All right. LeBron was the second player to have a seventh uh, a seventh game in the finals with a triple double. Who was the first? And Josh, you know this answer because I've done it on the morning show. So shut your face, <laughs> Justin. I'll throw that to you too. Who was the first player? To point? Say it again. Michael Jordan. Nope. Ah, Let me see if Justin. Let me. See. Let me say. Let me see if Justin can get this one. Who was the first player to clinch a seventh game in the finals with a triple double? Take a stab at it, Sean, because it's a player you hate. 
Magic Johnson. Uh, no. <laughs> Julius Irving. No. Player I dislike. Here oh, uh -huh. And you know who that player is? Who? James <laughs> Worthy. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me guess. It had to be 1985 or 1987. 88. 88. Oh, that was against the bad boys of Detroit, the Detroit Pistons. That was against the that was against the Detroit Pistons. All right, let me go back. Let, let me go back to Josh here. All right. Who was the first Bears quarterback with back to back 3,000 yard seasons? Sid Luckman. You won't believe your ears. Jay Cutler. Oh. 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 Yes. Wow. I'll take that over Ryan Tannehill. I'm sorry, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um uh down to Brown down to Browning. All right. False. There has never been an Eagle receiver to record a two hundred yard game. True. That's false. Deshaun nah. Jackson did it three years ago. Second point, but the first I'll one is completely wrong. Okay, I'm going to be playful. Justin, quit talking about asses. And no, T.O. never had a 200-yard game. If I'm wrong, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, just, I do remember Deshaun doing it. Up to Sean. <laughs> yes. uh oh, here we go. Yeah, true or false? Tom Brady does not own a 500 yard game. False. True. What? <laughs> I thought that was, wait a minute. I thought he had a 500 yard game hey, one you, you you probably, you four, I would think that Brady got a lot of 400 yard, yard games. Sean, he's got a lot of 400 <laughs> yard games, but not a 500 yard game. Back to Josh. Who's the last Bears running back with a 200 yard game? Oh, man. Um, it was Thomas Jones, mm. Matt Forte. Against Carolina. Um, let me go back to Bro let me go back to Mister Browning here. Who was the last? Wait, I don't have that answer in front of me, so I'll throw I'll I'll throw that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Name the eagle that holds the record for most touchdown passes in a game. Uh, name for uh, top touchdown passes. Mm hmm. I know it's not McNabb. No. Foles. You got it. Against Oakland, he threw seven. <laughs> and one more for Walmart boy. And I'm going to read Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, no, I got one for everybody. I got one okay. for everybody. Name the receiver who holds the single game record for receiving yards. Jerry Rice. <laughs> I hate to do it with such a guess, but... <laughs> Oh. Mm. Randy Moss? <laughs> I'll give you the year. Bruce. Isaac Bruce? Mm. I'll give you the year. Wow. Okay. 89. I think 19. Oh, I bet it has a 49er that has to do with this. No, it's not around you a lot. What's up, Steve and Q Shannon? Thanks for Dwight joining. Clark? Dwight, uh, I give up. Who? <laughs> it wasn't a 49er. It was actually a Ram that set the record. Willie Flipper Anderson. Willie Again, Flipper. Willie Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> Willie, Gosh, you Willie didn't know that answer because I've done it on the morning show several times. Willie the Flipper. <laughs> oh, Willie the Flipper, Flipper Anderson. Anderson. Flipper Anderson. <laughs> Uh, who's oh. a better receiver than Julian Edelman? No, I'm kidding. Wait a minute. He's got one of Super Bowl right there, and he's going to win more Super Bowls Jerry for Edelman. Rice. Jerry yeah. Rice has three, you bitch. All right. And he'll overtake Jerry forward. Rice for Super Bowls. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got to get going. We got to uh, get going. It's the second half of the hour. The second half of the sports 
I, I nearly said snowman in the morning. I'm sorry, Josh, because I'm so used to saying I'm so used to saying that. The second half of uh, the Sports Drive is brought to you by Wilk Fang Builders, located at 110 West Wilson in Hebron. Give them a ring at 219-996-7131. Take it away, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the band with the shocks is not here because he's working a baseball game. I got it. I got the shocks. But of course. Now we know that he's got the shocks. He's also got his items up for bid. We also got Browning Master who can't stand what the schmuck has to say. I'm here because I can't stand what the schmuck has to say. I even feel yeah. worse for a man that even has to spend all of his time and energy yes, and Lord. days and evenings having to write down idiotic, stupid Skip Bayless quotes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the Skippy Bayless Bash Hour. What are the seats? It's time for the Skippy Bayless Bash. <laughs> Skip Bayless all day long, and now it is our turn. We all know Bayless is a moron, but now the real stars fight back. One more time, because I'm back, goddammit. Time for the Skippy Bayless Bash. Skip Bayless time. talks crap all day long, and now it is our turn. We all know Bayless is a moron, but now the real stars fight back. The Skippy and Bayless have... Bash out at Twisted K8 Brewery here in the Port Indiana, because deep down we're all a little twisted. And your question, Sean, is? And how many mice do we got today there, Josh? We have 22 mice today. Oh, my God. 22. Uh, I can hardly wait to hear what this idiot has to say. That should give me something to look forward to. All right. Take it away there, Josh. And let's get the show going for our comedy Skip Bayless Bash Hour. (laughs) Um, By the way, (laughs) you guys, uh, you know it's a bad combination. Writing down the Skippy Bales quotes while listening to Michael Cole and JBL on commentary <laughs> <went> wrong last <laughs> night. <laughs> God awful oh. last night, jeez. God almighty, that hurts. I, I have oh, to say something. Is that a forearm? Is that a forearm, Michael? <laughs> I have to say, with May coming to an end, we have two more months left to go, just about, until he leaves no take, and then we got to deal with this crap on Fox Sports. Sports. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, you guys ready? Ready to go. Don, I apologize. Oh, we have a lot of Boston quotes today. Not all of them are Boston oh, quotes, boy. but there's a lot of them. Uh, uh, I don't know what's his actual name, but the main yeah. event is not always an hour. It's, it's up to how many quotes I want to uh, dish out there. And sometimes it does take a literal <laughs> hour. We've had that done. We've had that happen three separate times already. I, 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 I usually keep the max to 35 minutes. That's the max I keep the segment. CL, the main event calls it. It's a max of 35 minutes until Josh decides to go completely, totally the bloody hell off. <laughs> look, look, what the, look what CL, the main event, says. A literal hour? Yeah. <laughs> we, we try to, CL, we usually I think we try did that once on Sports World Radio. Like Josh. Like Josh said, we usually try to keep it to 35 minutes, but we've had more times when Sports Drive has come here to Arena Sportsnet that it's gone a complete hour than it has on Jock Journal and Sports World Radio. So we own the record right here. Three different times we've gone a full hour and didn't realize we had gone a full hour. Yeah, we have so much comedy in it. This thing goes by really fast, too. <laughs> Indeed, we do. All Let's right. go. Take it away there, Josh. Here we go, man. Skippy Bale said that Panda reminds him of a hungry hippo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Honestly, sometimes. How can you talk about the Panda like this? This is a guy that's won three World <laughs> Series championships. Was it MVP hungry, in hungry. 2012? Oh, hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, shut up, Justin. You got the panda. I knew that was going to come from you. Oh, goodness. Wow. Uh, it's more, it's more you know this way. You know what, Skip Bayless? You look like a turtle when you're on no take. And I hate to say it. An arrogant, slow, actually, an arrogant, moving little turtle, you piece of shit. 
<laughs> a stiff, a stiff turtle with an afro on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. 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 thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, here we go, oh. Snowman. What do you have? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't Come think on. I ever heard Sean go off that much. <laughs> well, wait till I the went next off. one. Wait till I went the off. Next one. Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Justin, it's not a great start. Don't give me this. Oh, yeah, it right. is. It's a wonderful start here, and you go completely off. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, here we go. All right, I'm ready. Scooby Bayless said that Alex Rodriguez would school Ted Williams if he was playing in Ted Williams' era. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> He's gone! Well, he left. <laughs> I, I like that, oh, Justin. Boy. The simple question. Hey, how do you feel about this, Sean? <laughs> Yeah, Sean, what do you think about that, buddy? I, I feel that there is no doubt that Ted Williams was never a cheater, unlike Alex Rodriguez, oh. who is a freaking cheater! He takes steroids, you dumb shit! That'd I have Williams stuff right here! That'd I can't be, believe it! Wow! Yeah, I know. Um, all right, we got the first my of the day. We all ready? I'm ready. Oh, yes, so. Good grief, here we go. Hey Sean, you're gonna la- you're gonna piss your pants when I do these sound effects. I'm <laughs> warning you right now. Skip me oh. said that my. Once the torture begins. I just about pissed my pants. Oh my goodness. Skippy Bayless said that my San Francisco 49ers will move to San Diego next year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. So we're just looking out. But now they're San Diego. No, he's took the mic off. He didn't even drop me. This ripped. <laughs> hey, how do you feel about that, snowman? The San Diego 49ers. <laughs> the San Diego really 49ers. Gone. I think that. <laughs> oh, he's, he's really upset. He really got snowman PO'd right now. Wow. Uh, I'm just the a messenger. Me. Please do not send your email <laughs> to me. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh oh, here we oh, go. Here we go. <laughs> oh boy! Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Uh oh! Here he comes. Here we go. Fuck you, Skip Bayless. You need to move to San Diego because you can actually get. I shouldn't say it the way I'm going to say it, but fuck it. I'm going to say it anyway. You need to move to San Diego so you can actually get some fucking sports knowledge in your life. And I have my first item up for biz, and it's this. (laughs) (laughs) Of the bullshit that comes out of your mouth, and in some cases, your ass when you're talking out the side of it. Have you noticed how... Have you noticed since we... I was just going to say, have you noticed since uh, the 29th of February how he's had a dislike like for the 49ers and their stadium saying, oh, their stadium's a dump. The 49ers need to move out of San yeah. Francisco. Yeah, because they won't let him in. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's the button I was looking for. Next. <laughs> All right. Uh, Skibby Bayless said that my... Here we go again. <laughs> This is our fucking city. That's for you, son. My Chicago White Sox should get rid of Frank Thomas as an ambassador because he's a juice oh. head. Oh, whoa. That's addressed to two people. Actually, that's addressed to Josh Browning and Snowman. Wow. Oh, Josh left. I want a hey, Browning. What do you say about that? You, right you're the back. one who. Always... I'll be right back. Well, I guess Browning and I are here uh, by ourselves right now, and I uh, think that's a. You know what? That's a disappointing. Skips the full. Skips full head of crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Video time. I 
yes. going to be coming, Mrs. Yes, Sound yes, Fire. Yes, yes. <laughs> Skip Bayless, you're a jobber. Would you please shut the hell up? Let's end it there. Oh, he's probably saying that, oh, the White Sox are on a monumental collapse and they're going to go just bad, bad, oh, bad because they're not very good. Y'all ready? Yes. It's the next sign I'm up for bids. And Josh, this one's for you. Oh, yes. is, this, right? <laughs> is that Skip? Is that Skip Bayless hotline? <laughs> Browning just left us with that. the next quote. I don't know. Yeah, he's probably saying, "Oh yeah, Frank jo- Frank Thomas is overrated. He's on juice. The White Sox will have a monument you know, collapse." I, I, Skip Bayless, I, shut I, up! I had a Colin Cowherd back star because I can't stand that schmuck. I might the only create. Thing, the only good thing about that. this show is the blonde chick that's right next to him. <laughs> that girl is really hot, though. I got <laughs> Christine Leahy, best for business. There you go. <laughs> yes. She's not brunette. She's blonde. Who the Have you watched the show? Wait a minute. <laughs> Can I just make one little statement, please? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? She's hot. Jesus. No one listens to Colin. They watch the girl. And you and kind of going back to it, but that's what Skip Bayless believes. No, I'm not, talking, says, about, I'm not it, talking about uh first take just I'm talking about Colin's show, not Skip's. Oh, oh yeah. All right. That's true. I was just saying though, it's, it appa- it appears to me that Skip Bayless has got such a big like to- dislike toward the Chicago White Sox. He dislikes them that. He'll probably yeah. say, Oh, Robin Ventura should be fired right now because the team's going on a slump right now. Oh geez. Hey, I'll tell you this, Frank you Thomas would be a better play. hitting hey, coach. Hey. hey, I'll say this. And who's uh, in first place in the Central Division in the American League Central Division right now? That would happen to be yeah, yeah. Josh, and you know the answer. That would happen to be your Chicago White Sox. Yeah. Period. What did, you, uh, what did you have, Josh? I was gonna say that Frank Thompson would be a better hitting coach than Barry Bonds. Period. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> He's with the Miami Marlins, Barry Bonds is. Oh, Barry Frank Thomas Bonds. would be a better okay, let me go there twice over. He's a better hitting coach than Barry Bonds, and he's a better hitting coach than Mark McGuire. Period. <laughs> and uh, allow me to press this button. Next! All right, let's get uh, Mr. I'm from Bumblefuck, Idaho, raging and oh, roiling. Oh, no, <laughs> rage against the oh. machine coming up. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> and he's warming. Skippy Bale said that the Red Sox should trade John Farrell to the Yankees for Joe Girardi. Damn it! Damn it! What? Honestly! Also, your parents are not home here. You scream. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my. John Farrell to the Yankees for Joe Girardi. Scratch my ass with that, you dumb <laughs> shit! Wow. <laughs> That's giving. I have to say this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Joe Girardi would be a joke. He is not a good manager. I like Farrell better than Girardi. You dumb shit. Please. <laughs> Can we officially start this the the second hand counting how many times Sean has used your phrase? Scratch my ass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, that just angers me so much. Ooh. Oh, I you're think, not gonna like I, this. I never one. saw. I never saw Ted Williams move that fast in his advanced age. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I am, I am kidding. I know, I know. All right, um, Scooby Bale said that Pablo Sandoval is the Vince Wilfork of the MLB. God. God. Well, you know, yeah, I know. Panda and Vince yeah. Wilfork share something that's very big. They um, both of them have championships. Um, that Panda's got three, and Vince Wilfork's hey, won some Super Bowls too. Hey, hey, hey Pablo San, hey Pablo Sandoval's attorney. You seem to forget one thing. There's no food left in Boston because of those two. Either. Correct. <laughs> the fish oh, market what? is down. <laughs> what you think they're both going to fast food restaurants? Going to Mickey D's? Someone called the Wham 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 about Mi- I'm not talking about Mickey. Wait a minute, Sean. Answer a question for me. There's a show that I got hooked on called Man vs. Food, and they did an episode in Boston. Is it the Eagles Deli that's in Boston? 
But I think nice, so. I think I, would, nice. I, I had some sea. I had some nice seafood when I was out there in New you England last year. I want to see, see Pablo Sandoval and Vince Wilford. <laughs> Sorry, in the real town. I want to see Pablo Sandoval and Vince Wilford go to Eagles Deli and try that Eagles challenge. Hey. Hey, let me ask you something. Is there a real New England, Massachusetts, or is that a bumblefuck town like Coeur d'Alene, Idaho? It's, it, hey, it's all New England. You got Massachusetts. You got Maine. You got Rhode Island. You got Just Connecticut. Stop. Come stop. on. There you go. Stop all right, let's go yeah, to New one. Hampshire. Next. <laughs> Please. Think, the, band, the band has been lifted. It's beyond a half hour. All right, here Thank we go. You, Justin. Here we All go. Right. All right, here we go. Skibby Bale said that my fuck. <laughs> Welcome to W E E I. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <eat the home. laughs> <laughs> um, you know my what? Miami Heat should bring LeBron James back and have the big three back. Sean, oh. you're not allowed to boot people off. It's only me and the snowman. Listen. Never listens. Get this it. Tom Brady. <laughs> <up> all the time. <laughs> Brownie. <laughs> Wrong, Brownie. Brownie. <laughs> Hey, Browning, you want to hear repeat that again? What did you just say, you bastard? He says he only okay. listens to Tom Brady's excuses. <laughs> hey, Brown, hey, Browning, shut up. Hey, you yes. what to do. How about um, this one, Sean? <laughs> you ready? Oh, yeah, that he's going to Miami. Oh, that makes Justin very happy. Go ahead. Okay, I got, I'm going to put something in the chat room that's going to piss Sean off. That's going to get him knee deep in the camera, and it's going to get everybody to agree with me. Josh, your next quote, please. Oh, jeez, get ready for this. <laughs> me, 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 me. Um, <laughs> Skippy Bayless said, <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> what in the blue hell is. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll, go ahead. I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead. You hand go ahead <laughs> um, Skippy <laughs> Bale what's, said what's the next one? that Tony Romo will have a better offensive year than Tom Brady did in 2007. Wait a minute. What was that? I can't. Whoa. I'm tied to the bet. Oh, Romo shit. better than Brady? That's a stupid <laughs> thing to say, Skip. Wow. Yeah, Romo. Tony. Yeah, he's coming back for collarbone oh. surgery. <laughs> He's got two no. god dang playoff wins. With Brady's got on more. <laughs> and Brady gets two in, and Brady gets two in one playoff session, okay? <laughs> wait, wait till he overtakes Montana for more Super Bowls. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, okay. This is off topic, but I'm doing this just to pick on Sean and to get him knee deep in the camera. And Sean, you gotta realize I'm poking fun at you. I know a quarterback that wears number 12 that's going to have a better year than Tom Brady. Who? Who's Andrew it? Luck. Oh, oh my Luck. God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Andrew Luck can't I even do. beat the Patriots. Don, I, Don, I gave my preface before I said what I said. Did right, not, Justin. Yes, he did. <laughs> He right, Josh, earned those. I'm like overrated Joe Montana. Next one. Yes. All right. oh, oh, Brady. Brady's oh. overrated, and so is his wife. Yes, it is. What do you uh, mean his wife is nice? Come on. That's subjective. <laughs> that's subjective. <laughs> have you seen Giselle? That girl, is, that girl looks like a man, to be honest with you. She, she, oh, she, looks, come on. Like, she looks like China. She looks like Nicole Bass for any of the Look at what Justin said. <laughs> no, she's she's a bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Josh, next one, please, before we get so distracted. We can't stand it. All right, all right. All right. Well, I'll, someone I'll, just I'll, came in. John Leland's in the house with us watching this craziness. What's up, John? Thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, hey, John, how you doing? Not, welcome here. Sorry for the birds <laughs> in the background. Um, anyways, uh oh. Skippy Bales to the my oh, no. oh, not again. Okay, I got one. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Pac-Man. <laughs> Uh, the Chicago Cubs are uh, revisiting a dose of reality. Fuck yeah, they are. Ooh. This you know, has effect on me. I'm not a Cubs fan. So. Yeah, that's got no, right that's got no effect on me either. I'm all Southside, baby. <laughs> if Frank was here right now, he would not like that. And you if know Frank what? He's was, talking, what? Listen. If Frank were here, he'd boot everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is probably. Uh, you know what? He, this is what Skip Bayless knows and realizes. He hates Chicago. He wants right. to see the White Sox and Cubs make monumental collapses because because he's saying, oh, Chicago's not a good sports town. It's not a good place to live. It's not a nice place. <laughs> That's what he thinks. <laughs> um, all right. Ronnie, right for wrestling this is for you. <laughs> what the hell is that? This is better than Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline. Shut up. You wish you could have Sweet Caroline. That's not. I told y'all, for some reason, I'm ornery this morning. (laughs) All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, Sean wishes he could have Sweet Caroline. Next. (laughs) Next. Oh, what's the matter? What's the matter, Justin? You jealous? Next. Why should we be jealous of a song that describes a whore? It's by Neil Diamond. Come on, Sweet Caroline's a popular song. They sing it. Objective. I, I sang that during the eighth inning. Yeah, that's when I was there. And that's the problem. And that should tell you. And I'm kidding as I said that statement. That should tell you everything you need to know. Once again. Next. All right. Skippy Bale said that Vince McMahon should pay him money. <laughs> for what? What the, hell is, what the heck does he need money for? <laughs> <laughs> Your ears bleed. I'd like to see you try Justin. singing, Justin. Yeah, let's Justin? see you sing. <laughs> Justin, this is for you. That's terrible. <laughs> Next. Got your terrible right ear. No, I'm just Next. All right. Uh, Skippy Bale said that my. Oh, no. Hi, I'm Tom Brady, and I suck. We're the New England Patriots, and we cheat. He's criminy. I cannot believe this. All right. Believe it. Scoop Bale hey, said Ronnie, that. Shut up. Go ahead. Uh, stupid birds. Um, Scoopy Bale said that my Philadelphia Eagles should bring in Tim Couch as a quarterback's coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brody. What do you say about that? He's Brody, just wanna, Brody just got pissed off. He just left. <laughs> you know what? Justin said the right word. Yikes. <laughs> Look, look what Browning says. No comment. Oh, come on, Browning. There's got to be some comment from you over there, Browning. There's nope. got to be some comment. Next. Yeah. Go ahead, Slimmy. Hit it. Can I, can I hit the button now? Yes. Ah! Skippy oh. Bayless. Wants to interview Steph Rollins tonight, not Jonathan Coachman. Uh oh. Skip, stop being jealous. You're not good at what you do. You're not good at talking sports. So, what makes you think you're going to be good talking about wrestling? He could, Shut he up. Could, he probably could say, Well, I could come to the sports drive and interview Josh Lopez or Andrew or Brian or Sean because I know my stuff. He ain't interviewing yeah, okay. me. There'll only be two, th- there are two things that'll happen if he tries to interview me. Or me. He'll get one of these and a stone cold stunner. What? I'll just, kick, I'll just kick him. I'll kick his butt and say, "Get out of my life! Get out of here!" What? What? <laughs> what? I like that. What? Dan, Dan, Dan. Okay, it's, it's okay, not Dan. Dan. It's Dam. Dan. Oh, fine. Dam, Dam, Dam. First you said down if syndrome, and then he said Dan. If you're gonna learn how to cuss, listen to George Carlin, will you please? Damn, damn, damn. Next one here. 
What's up, Dan- Danny Ayubi? I don't think I got that right, but Danny Ayubi's in the house with us. Thanks for tuning in. Dr. Corey, yeah. Hey, pr- Skippy Bale said that Space Jam 2 will be Oscar worthy next Bullshit. Next That's you some are- day, homogenized Holstein, Royal Farms Arena, LeBron oh, James. Right. Bullshit. I was nine years old. I was nine years old when the first Space Jam came out, and that is the best and always will be the best, better than what this punk jerk is going to be so good at. Space Jam 2 is overrated. Space Jam 2 is not even out yet. yet. Look, Space Jam 2 is not even out yet, and it's about as old as the clue. You're going to go out. What'd you say, Browning? Uh, Someone sit on there in the chat box there, and then someone won the. <clears throat> oh, is there any hope? Uh, hope to jump in with you guys? I mean, if one of us wants to leave, well, I'll leave it up to no. Snowman. It don't matter to me. Snowman, um, how much time? Do, how much time do we got here? Thirty one minutes. We okay. have five more minutes for the bash hour. Get to ten. Next one. Okay. Ah! Uh, Scooby Bale said that my not again. <laughs> my Boston Red Sox should bring back Johnny Damon. <laughs> The trader, right? The one that won the World Series in 09 with the Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> he was a part of the 04 team. And Johnny Damon, um, no, I don't think so. I like the young talent that we have right now. I'm going to piss off Sean with this clip. Oh, It'll be a three one. Swung on and driven down the right field line. There, the game is over. It's a fair ball into the corner. Ben Amit scores. Johnny Damon gets his sixth of the day, a ribby single. And that was not, that was 2008. That's all I need to say. Yeah, by the overrated <laughs> Michael K and by those other stupid New York guys. Hey, Michael K is not overrated. He's bullshit. You know? Yeah, he's annoying. He's a Yankees fan. It's John that Sterling. Was, it's John Sterling, not Michael well, well, they're both because annoying. Because you got Michael it wrong and, and you don't Sterling. know your announcers, take that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Justin <laughs> said it perfectly. Sean is never biased. Bullshit. Give me a Sean's break. About bi- Sean's about as biased as every New England Patriot announcer yeah. I know. Or or yeah. escort on stage. You know what? Yeah. Pa- Patriot oh, you right. stop it, Josh. You Patriot stop it. Right. Like with this slipping, the Patriots are class and their broadcasters are class. A truthful question. Who... um. I think Gil Hodges retired, and someone took. Who is the uh, who is the Patriots radio play by play? Oh, I forget who it is. It, was, it wasn't. Uh... Did he come from the Deflated family in Gillette Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what, Justin? You like him, and you find him very attractive. Where's your dolphin slippers? Those are the real Cinderella. Nobody slippers. wears their own fourteen wait, slippers. Wait, wait. Find, it, find them attract. Find them attractive. Are you kidding me? They smell worse than Tom Brady after practice. They look so great and stuff. I got those for Christmas last year. Come on. All right. Um, They'll fit. Skippy Bailey said that Brett Favre needs to no, – my bad, Pablo Sandoval needs to take the Brett Favre route if he wants to get look well in, uh, <laughs> with the belt on. He's he needs the to know the regular He's the panda for crying out loud. <laughs> He's out for the whole year, okay? I mean, it wasn't Panda's fault that his belt broke when he was playing against Toronto last month. Come on! Yeah, and he missed badly on the on the pitch that he swung on. It was a mistake with his belt, okay? At least his pants I'm didn't mistake. drop down. Yeah. Right. Sean. We have two more quotes. Sean, more quotes. I've what? made mistakes with my belt, and they never popped the way that Pandas did. Yeah. Oh! Uh... Hey, Sean, yeah. I hate to inform you this, but given the last two weeks, I work out a lot more than the panda, and I'm going to continue to keep it up. The, the panda's great. Shut up, Browning. You don't you quit your laugh and you overrated bowling player. Next one. Uh, uh, Listen, this will get Sean. Hey, 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 Josh, watch this. The panda sucked worse than Teddy Bruschi. Oh, <laughs> no. 
Don't you dare talk about Teddy. Big Daddy has never popped anything on his Big Daddy V. Oh, Neither has Corey Holcomb. Neither has Corey Holcomb. I can't believe this. In some cases, neither have I. And thank God for that. So, man, you know who Corey Holcomb is, right? Hell yeah, who Corey Holcomb is. He's the man. I got one for Sean. Pablo. <clears throat> Pablo Sandoval sucks worse than Dion Branch. Oh, quit bringing Panda. Quit comparing Panda to Patriot Greats. I Pablo went to the Patriots Sandoval Hall of Fame last year. Patriot Greats. Pablo Sandoval Patriot sucks Grace. worse than Dennis Oil Can Boyd. Oh, uh, don't do you, like you dare talk about Oil Can Pablo Boyd. He was, he was a great sucks Red worse Sox. Than Roger Clemens. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. We have two more. Oh, yeah, look, at, oh, oh look at Golden Boys. <laughs> I, 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 know. I know. Patriot Gate, great Dion. He sucked. Next he one. He was great. All right, Skippy Bill said, yeah, Am I? Better. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm Dion Branch. I can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> My. Fenway Park should turn into White Castle Park. <laughs> All right. That is real egotistical <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I cannot believe it. You do not say that about Fenway Park, and that is not great, Justin. Eat your yes, words and shut up. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I went to Fenway Park, and that's still one of the best ballparks of all time. Still ranked number one. Yeah. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> all um, one more, and I got to – You know what? I'll save the wheel spins for when we do a, a, a review. Sip your I'll just lips. press it. Ah! All right, here we go. Oh man, this bash shard has been a doozy. <laughs> oh, it's been entertaining. It's been entertaining. It's a doozy every day. Oh, jeez. All right, here we go. Welcome to White Castle Park in Boston. <laughs> That's bullshit. That doesn't have any. Fenway is better. Yaki Way. It's going to happen. Yes. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. No, welcome it to isn't. Lucky one, welcome oh, to Lucky right, One Park in and, Boston. And why the hell would you name hey, a ballpark hey, called hey, U.S. Hey, Cellular we, Field? We go from White Castle Park to another Boston Arena Park that Skip Bales oh. came up with, okay? Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Skippy yeah, Bale said that the my <laughs> my Boston Celtics should change the TD Bake North Garden mm. to the Dr <laughs> Pepper Garden. <laughs> Who in the Who did he say this? Bayless? I have to question this one. I have to question. When did he say this? On uh, Stephen A. Smith's show last Thursday. <laughs> You know something, Skip Bayless? That's about, that is so stupid. You are full of shit like the Christmas goose. I do not understand why you would want to change Fenway Park to another name. And now the bank, TD Bank North Garden? I went to both places last year, you idiot. Wow. Who gives a fuck about TD Dr. Bank Pepper. North Garden? Just, Come on. Just, just, call it, just call it the new Boston Garden and be done with it. Okay? I, I didn't know that's the end of the Skippy Bill's Bash Cup. Oh, wow. I that's our wrestling poetry on Thursday. <laughs> that okay. was a real uh, nerve wracking one. A ner- nerve wracking? Since when did you get nerve wracked? When you were after all, Subway this morning? <laughs> I might have a drop off. Yeah, I might be going to Subway to have a fancy pizza when I'm there. Yeah. No, no you'll be the going place to White Castle. Sandwiches, not pizzas, you Nimrod. But there are pizzas at Subway at Walmart. No. I like it. No, there aren't. Yeah, there is. Okay. No, there's not. I heard it all. I heard it all. Let's go to the ripping do. arena names, please. Yes. Okay, and just to be sure that Josh doesn't bring up the segment before, we're going to identify his next choice by this sound from the Joker's Wild. <laughs> uh, a little backstory for those of you tuning in for the first time. On three occasions now, we've gone, we've introduced a new segment, 
and I played. I won't even say the button that I played, but y'all know the the one that I played during the bash hour. And he would try to. He would like shortly go into a a, a skippy court and forget that we're inside a new segment. So <laughs> to make sure that does not happen, yes, the main identifying sound for the arena names will be this. All right, starting off first here, we have the BMO Harris Bank Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. BMO Harris. B- what? <laughs> how, how about this one? The uh, no, 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 that that one's already established. How about this one? The Sleep Train Arena in Sacramento. Oh which my is, goodness! Which is gonna get destroyed? Oh man, that, that's a tough. Wow! Yeah, after wow. Arco, after after Arco lost the naming rights some ten years ago. How about this one, Arthur Ashe Stadium? Oh, you know what? That's actually, legendary. That's I actually. John, that I apologize for this one. Number eight, the no. Tippy Dome. <laughs> Dome. <laughs> For the what Idaho Vandals. What the Idaho hell is that? Yes. What the hell is that shit? I don't even. I don't even watch Idaho Vandals. I'm focusing on the Montana Grizzlies. Have you ever been to the Kibbe you know, The Montana no. Grizzlies stuck. Okay, Montana oh Grizzlies stuck. All right, no, the- they don't. I live three hours away from there. Come on. Why don't you just watch the Idaho Vandals? The Palace of Auburn Hills. You know oh, what? That oh. came up. You know what? The Palace of Auburn Hills. Is an arena that has not succumbed to a corporate name. All right, yeah. it, it, uh, Ryan Young, keep out of this. And yeah. I've already Can't talked wait. about the Warriors on my on my morning show. Okay, you're a bit late, and yeah, I tore them apart. Hey, Ryan, do you want to you want me to leave so you can give you can bust Snowman's no, chops? Ain't nobody got to. We'll no. do that on Thursday, maybe. No. Um. <laughs> Yeah, after the after the Warriors tie it up, that's probably the only shit I'm going to talk about in NBA. <laughs> earlier. Given what I said earlier about how much I don't like this current this current era, that's probably the only shit I'm going to talk about the NBA. Mm-hmm. But the uh, the pal, uh, no, you're overrated. No, Tom, <laughs> let me take it back. Tom Brady is overrated. Steph Curry is an NBA. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, bullshit. Oh, don't hit me with that. No. I agree, no man. <laughs> Brady is overrated. The next no, he one. Isn't. Four Super Bowls. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, there you go. Uh, how about this one? FedEx Field huh? for the Redskins. <laughs> oh yeah, FedEx <laughs> Field. You know, land over Maryland. Good Lord. Did they, did they have a truck to deliver the stadium? <laughs> oh, Browning, that is good. Yeah, nice. They shipped wow. out. They shipped out RG 3s manhood. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, what are they going to do at Tom about Tom Brady's manhood? He loses his appeal. Next one. He's not going to lose uh, the wait, appeal. Wait, wait, wait. He's going to I, win. I said I, I said I play the sound, and I'll play the sound. Um, Tropicana Field. I've been, in, you know what? I've been what in a joint, and I never will go in it again. The lighting is weird. They, yeah, actually, not only that. Final, they actually hosted a Final Four at Tropicana. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> you know what, Justin? That's for you. Shut up, oh, oh. Sean. Such vulgarity. Uh, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> the bastard doesn't know what he's talking about. I like Fed. You, do you know what, Justin? The thing about Tropicana hey. Field is this. You know what? You thought Sean was the Rays because they beat the Red Sox in 2008 in the American League Championship Series. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, let's fast forward five years later. The Red Sox won the ALDS three games to one in Tropicana Field. Um, the annoying dunk with the loud cowbells. Well, you know what? That would be that would be Arco Arena in Sacramento with all those goddamn cowbells there too, and they're Period. moving into a new place. Oh no, I'm not! Cut that out! I don't have. Josh. Wait a minute, hold it. Josh, right, Josh I, have- I have to. Josh, I have to. Sean, this is for you. <laughs> Go Bears. 
<laughs> go Bears. No, Browning, go ahead. If you got to go, go ahead. Let you Justin sit in. I want to oh, this. Come on, leave, Browning. That's our, yeah, Justin can come in. All right, see so if he's got something to do. See you, Browning. I, I had to play this. Go get that first down, then get a touchdown. Rock up, suck up. Killing me. Words of the Patriots song. We know Sean's a fan of the Vikings. He just won't admit it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Right for the next one. Oh, no. Frank gave me this. At, oh, I need to press a button here. We'll let Justin come in. Okay. Justin, come on in, bud. Come on in, Justin. I mean, I was only teasing with you, Justin. Sorry about the birdie, but you pissed me off. I'm not a damn. I'm not a damn Rays fan. I'm not even a Vikings or a goddamn Twins fan. Okay. You're a Jets fan. You're full of shit, Justin. You are full of shit. We see the evidence in the background. We know you're a Twins fan. Don't trip. No, I'm not. Okay, I may have two Twins hats somewhere oh, because it's somewhere. Okay. okay. Yeah. I read, signed okay. by Joe Mauer, probably. <laughs> Uh, no, that goes back fair. to my grandfather no. who's a Twins fan. Signed by, signed by Kent Herbeck. Oh, God. Well, that was right, late 80s. All right, enough, enough. We got to go right. to the next one. You guys all right, I press, I press, press the spin button. All right, number uh, – I have a list from Bleacher Report. This is the 30 worst stadiums and arena in American sports. Oh, you God. tell me if you agree or disagree, oh, okay? No. <laughs> First of all, it's Bleacher Report. That should tell you everything you need to know. I know, right? All right, for, uh, at number thirty, the Izod Center in New what the Jersey. What is that shit? What is that? Well, Y'all remember the it. popular Izod shirts? No, for some reason, they tore their shirts into the the old Brendan Byrne Arena, which is going to get blown to bits. All it's right? already blown up to bits. Oh, they already hey, did blow it up. Okay, hey, cool. can somebody blow up Royal Farms Arena? By the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dump. And okay, that crowd last just, night was Justin, horrible. This one's for you. Can we return the name of Sun Life Stadium back to Joe Robbie Stadium, please? I wish. Man. Hey, let and me ask you a question, owner. Justin. Hey, let me ask you a question, Justin. So if you live in the East Coast, you need to have a bug up your ass. Those people in Baltimore were rude last night. I know. Jesus That's Christ. Crazy. Especially That's during crazy. Ric Flair, man. Okay. Here's, that pissed cool. me off. Here's an, arena name. Here's an arena name that needs to be changed. <laughs> can can we change the American Airlines? I think it's American Airlines. The American Airlines Center is in Dallas. Correct. I want to be sure I, yes. get, I, be sure mm-hmm. I get them right. Mm-hmm. Number, 20, number 29 is... Yeah. So, man, it's good. Worst fan segment. You know what? That's an idea. That's we'll do that. Thing. Let's do yeah. that Thursday. Yeah, we'll do that Thursday. What the hell? Why do we need to do a worst fan segment there, right? The Boston fans are among the worst. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. We'll no, do it I by thought... team. We'll do it by teams, not individuals. Okay. okay. All right. We'll do it by. We'll do it by teams. What's All the right. next one? Uh, on, uh, there we go. Uh, number twenty-nine, <laughs> Qual- Qualcomm Stadium. Qualcomm Stadium. Oh, yeah. you know. What? You know what? Qualcomm should not even exist on that stadium. They should just rename it back to Jack Murphy Stadium and be done, okay? The Alamo so, Dome is number 28. That's self-explanatory. Uh, the Bridgestone Center in Nashville. <laughs> home to the home what? to the Stupid what? Predators. What? <laughs> how about what are they going to do? Turn that, turn that place into a shape of a tire? Yeah. What the hell? How, how about this one? That's California tires. Memorial Stadium. California Wait. Memorial Stadium. Yeah. Is that University yeah. of California? Yeah. Yes. That's actually True. cool. I've been in there. Yeah. And, and Justin, I'm not there before they I didn't go in there before they did the renovations, but that was cool. Is that oh, a cemetery? Not a cemetery, right, young. <laughs> All right, number twenty five, the Edward Jones Dome. St. Louis. That's gonna be blown up. All right, sorry, so man, this one's gonna piss you off. Uh, Candlestick Park is number twenty-four. You know Candlestick what? Park. As much as I'm a for, as much as I'm a 49er fan, and I've been in Can- Candlestick Park was a dump, and I'm glad they blew that some bitch up. All right. <laughs> uh, it, was cold. It, was cold. it could be eighty degrees outside the stadium in San Francisco, but it was colder than shit in Candlestick Park. 
every time. <laughs> look, at, look at the chat room. Look at Ryan Young. Is that a cemetery? <laughs> yeah. We've got that just <laughs> already. <laughs> What's the next um, one? <clears throat> Justin, I think you'll appreciate this one because it's one of your divisional rivals. Uh, Nationals Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin, Nationals Park. What do you think? The well, god awful name. Do Do you think That's, I remember it, Nationals think, Park? Hey, oh, no. Jay, do you, Jay, do you think Nationals Park will ever go corporate? I don't think they will. Never. I don't for think what the T Mobile. The okay, T-Mobile then, I got one. I got another question for Jay. Will they blow up that damn home run sculpture, please? And, and yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding as I asked that question, okay? You know what they could add to that home run sculpture? Some fucking fireworks, okay? Blind Period. people. Look, I'm not look, I'm not advocating this. I'm kidding around as I say this, but add some fireworks and blind some people in the Budweiser balcony. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um and I think I got a confirmation on something on on Justin wants you to help me. Is Rich, Rich Waltz the teller voice of the Marlins? Because I know he does some College football for ESPN. I think it's Rich Waltz who's the I think it's one of those. team. Yeah. Okay. I have I have one. I have one. How about the the old place that was torn apart called the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Hold, no, I got a funny. I got a funny story for that. No, let him let him back in. I got a funny story about the Metrodome. I was covering Indiana Northwest once upon a time, and our spring break trip was to play six games. In the Metrodome, and this is when they were transitioning and calling it Mall of America Field at the time. I still called it the Metrodome. Now, I'm sitting where Paul Allen sits, and they have the baseball configuration. The second day I was there, I said, there's no way they'll be able to get a foul ball up here, and they would really have to croak it to get it up toward me. Well, one pitch after I said that, here comes a foul ball screaming toward me, and I had to bail out and get out of the way. And I had, I didn't have my headset mic. I had this right here on a mic stand, and I had to move it and the computer out of the way when that ball came flying in the booth. <laughs> Justin, zip it. I saw your comment. I am not a damn Twins the fan. The truth will come out soon. Here comes the next one. Uh, okay. Sunlight Stadium. I'm gonna go by these. Re- I'm gonna go by these ones really quick, so okay. we don't have lots of little concerns. This is a long list. Sorry. Um, the RFK Stadium in Washington. It's, <laughs> actually, the old one. it's actually historic, but yeah, named after Bob this Kennedy. Is dumb, either way, named uh, after Bob Kennedy. Rest in peace. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number 19, Coors Field. Uh, 18, Petco Park. Uh, number 17, uh, the um. Nassau Coliseum that's being torn down right now. Um, <laughs> number sixteen, the old .co Coliseum for the A's mm-hmm. and Raiders. The Oakland Athletics. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Um, number fifteen goes to the Mercedes Benz Superdome. This is odd to me because I thought the same is actually pretty nice. The Superdome is a cool place. What's yeah. up, Eric? Thanks oh, here. Here we go, Snowman. This one's for you. AT&T Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at, that, look at that face by Snowman. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, hey Robbie, I'm sorry for this one. Lincoln Financial Field is next. <laughs> Ooh, Browning, that is cold, buddy. That's cold. That's addressed to you since you're the big eagle. Do they still fan. have a jail at Lincoln Financial Field like they did at Veterans Stadium? <laughs> well, how would you <laughs> what when you guys watch games, how did you all feel about Veterans Stadium? How, what was your I wasn't about? born, so I didn't give a rat's ass. Yeah. I never got in that joint, so I don't care. I had some friends that went to a Phillies game, and that place was just a dump. I mean, it's just horrible Veterans Stadium. Well, Philly, Philly is a dump. Hey, what do you mean? They got the Independence Hall there, Josh, and the history of American Bandstand, uh, Philadelphia Packers. And then don't forget Philly. Rocky. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I better press up. I, I better press him up. Uh, the new Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went there last. Oh, I went last year to that, and I think it, it was a funny moment we had when we were right in front. I got of that mixed stadium. feelings about we that. Because, it off. 
because <laughs> on my bucket list is to call a game there to yeah. to, to just just call it if it's a high school game i don't care just to call uh, a game at the house. how about how about this one shit. number nine wrigley field <laughs> Maggoty ass field. Uh, Y'all know, know my story about why I'll never go to. Oh Rick no, I'm. This one pisses me off. Number oh. eight, U.S. Cellular Field. <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Hey, hey, did, hey, did oh, shut up. We posted this? more games than Fenway Park has. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey did, did uh, Gorgeous Truth make this freaking list? <laughs> Or the Golden oh, Truth, or whatever it's called. You guys sell your field number eight just oh. cracks me up. <laughs> oh my god! Next I one. I can't wait to bring up Fenway Park. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, number seven is uh, Bronco Stadium. Invesco old, Field. Yeah. Or I thought oh, the old god. Mile High Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. How about this one? The Avron B. Fogelman Arena. <laughs> What? What the fuck? <laughs> Look at Justin. Look at Justin's face. It's, what? It's what home, it's home for, it's, it's Where the fuck the, is that? It's home for the Tulane basketball team. <laughs> that explains a lot right there. Justin, your reaction is priceless. It's like, what is that? I mean, Bird, Bird Stadium is number four. Bird uh, Stadium. What the hell is Bird Stadium? Yeah. Your pie hole. That's what it is. Shut up. On uh, this one, number three, um, Black Shear Stadium, uh, Perry, uh, mid, uh the, the Perry View AM Panthers. Perry <laughs> View. Okay. Uh, uh, number two is the mm -hmm. old Metrodome on this list. Mm -hmm. Sorry, son. And that, number one is uh, Tropicana Field. Oh, yeah. You know what, Justin? And take those cowbells and shove it. I know how annoying Tropicana Field is. Oh, let's ring cowbells for the race. Oh, shut up. Good grief. They're annoying. Fenway Park is a dump. Uh, that's why it's, it's still up. It's 104 years old, you jackass. Jeez. God feels sorry for Fenway it. That's Park. why he keeps Fenway it up. Park should just Fenway Park should just grow corn. Yes. <laughs> Period. Uh, that I look forward Fenway to watching Park. every Red Fenway Sox there all the time. Hey, hey, Fenway Park should be a cornfield. Hey, if they a just, if a little yeah, they should make. A, I'm I'm kidding hey, as I say that. Sean. They should make the Patriots and the Red Sox share Gillette Stadium. We are not going to share it and go all the way to Foxborough and play and have to play baseball they games should. that take forever. Good. You hey, should. Uh, It'll be good. Yeah. This, this could be bad, but um, if they could do a controlled demolition on that little building that was like three or four blocks away from the World Trade Center, they could do the same thing to Fenway Park. Oh, man. Oh. 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 Listen. Listen. The one building that had no planes or anything on it, <laughs> but it actually <laughs> fell down. Come on, okay. bro. Sean's going Sean's gonna to hate me for this. You know what they could do? Fenway Park does not have any history. You know what they could do no. to Fenway Park? It does. No. Wait. You know what they could do to Fenway Park? Chop that some bitch in half. Yes. Chop it in half. <laughs> hey, have heard of the barber beefcake come out with his scissors and his scissors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they do? You, you know what they you know what they should do? They should get rid of all the signs that say Sun Life oh. Stadium, burn them up, and put Joe Robbie Stadium back on the marquee. Okay? Hey, Sean, the, the let one hey, Sean, let hey Justin, I'm cut old your school. Hair, not Walmart. I know. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old school. You know what? You know what they should do to Fenway Park? This is this is what they should do to Fenway Park. Somebody got an alert. This is what they should do to Fenway Park. And I know we're getting on to we're gonna get on to our spoken word. And I got to joke with Sean one more time. This is what they should do to Fenway Park. You take the upper deck and you chop it, okay? Then you crumble it up. No, you, you no. Crumble the piss, you crumble the piss out of it, okay? Take the sound system, blow it up. Take the PA system, blow it up. Take the um, uh, the broadcast booths, and I hate saying to destroy broadcast booths, but I they, they should in this case. They should destroy the broadcast booths of Fenway Park and Wrigley Field, put them together into a Hall of Shame museum, okay? But I will say this. I'd rather... No, I wouldn't rather. I would rather call a game at neither one of those places. I, I look. I sat in the booth at U.S. Angular Field during the World Series. All right, fuck you, Sean. 
But let me be serious. Let me, Preach. Let me be serious. Let, let me take the upper deck of Fenway Park out, okay? Then you have David Ortiz say, this is my fucking city, as they light a match and burn that some bitch to the ground. Wow, wow, well, well, you're really socking it to me right there. You bet your sweet pippy that they're socking it to me. But I'll tell you one thing. Fenway Park is still ranked number one all time. It didn't even make the list. No, Why? No, it's not ranked number one. Shut it up. Let's go to this fucking right. word. Let's get into our spoken word. Listen, this is another illustration of how much fun we have and how much we love doing this and how much... Uh, we appreciate each other, and this is better than any kind of social media setup or situation where you have to deal with people. People can be whoever they want to be behind the computer, but it takes a whole lot of balls to be yourself in person and in front of people. And with me, what y'all see is what y'all get. I said I was honorary this morning. I'm like this every day, but I'm honorary in a playful way around a lot of people. And the people that don't understand that, uh, that don't understand that, I'm sorry. They're just they're just stupid you know and yesterday i took the i took yesterday off so i can do some do some running around sales wise so i can do some website stuff which i'm going to do before my meeting this afternoon but when you get in front of people be yourself that's all you have to do if they accept you for who you are if not fuck them you don't need them that's my spoken word walmart like <laughs> okay i just a second yeah and also your pathetic calves anyway my spoken hey, <laughs> Up, Sean. Brownie, I thought you were supposed to do something with your grandmother. How are you still in the chat room? Yeah, are you still in there? Yeah. Did, oh, yeah. He had to break away and go run away. I, oh, you thought you did. Well, that's all right. We got Justin here in the house. And, yeah. Anyway, spoken word goes like this. We all like to bust each other's chops. We all like to have it fun. Keep it classy. Keep it fun. Laugh with each other. Don't take no crap from anybody and just enjoy life always. That's my spoken word. Mr. Hill, how's it going, my man? Go ahead. What's it's going, going good. Um, I'm just glad to be part of the show. It, it's a lot of fun. We all joke around, mostly at Sean, taking shots at Sean. We all love it. And go <laughs> Dolphins. Go Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. Just remember, Justin, week two, when New England beats uh, Miami, boy, I even, I'll send you a bunch of Kleenex. Yeah, I'll send you Kleenex. Yeah. Look, when, hey, when Namakatsu breaks, hey, hold up, matter- so, man. Oh. Hey, when Namikon Sue breaks Jimmy Garoppolo's uh, collarbone, I'll send you some flowers, son, and condolences, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? I'll say, don't you say one word to me. <laughs> and you know something? I'm going to predict something that hasn't happened since 1990. The, 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 the Dolphins will sweep the Patriots. Period. <laughs> that will not happen because New England is better than Miami. Tom Brady, because the Dolphins' defense don't give a motherfuck about Tom Brady. I don't give a motherfuck about Tom Brady, and quite a few people I know don't give a motherfuck about Tom Brady's cheating, lying ass. That's why he's going to sit four games, and then the Supreme Court's going to tack another twelve on top of it. No, it's not going to happen. That Period. won't happen because you're talking about the best quarterback who ever played the game. Oh, and Josh is so the word. Time. Gosh, please. No, you're rolling. Shut your mouth, please. <laughs> hey, Snowman, drop the mic, please. <laughs> Por favor. <laughs> we, we need to do it once a show. Drop the mic. There you go. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, my spoken word goes like this. I'll, I'll, I'll hack Frank in this one, but uh, be the authentic product that is yourself. Go check out some good wrestling because we've had two good shows over this past week with uh, Extreme Rules and Raw this past Monday night. And, um, yeah, have some fun. Uh, take the time to laugh, listen to some music, knock your socks off. And don't have your head up your ass all the time. That's all I ask. I mean, I'm so done with running with people that have attitude problems. You say, oh, uh, I want everybody to feel sorry for me. Stop making excuses to yourself and find a way to make yourself happy. Indeed. Stop playing the victim card. Amen. And, and Chicago, you should be ashamed of yourself with this recent set I just seen about the killings, uh, compared from last year to this year. So on that note, um, keep those positive fights going. Uh, by the way, tomorrow I'm recording the uh, Josh Lopez Wrestling Podcast tomorrow at noon Eastern. If you guys want to see it live as it's going on as we tape it, by all means, I can start something that's gonna be on uh, YouTube. Um, but besides that, have some fun. Um, knock your socks off. For Justin, follow me on Twitter. I am Justin Hill. 
for the snowman. Follow him at Golden Voice Snow. We will have a debate for, for Mr. Young, uh, who thinks Steph Curry is overrated. And <laughs> 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 I cannot wait for that. Mr. Young. 